Isn't this fortuitous? On a day where Dave Chang and I have been goofing around in this kitchen, failing miserably making pastry. Uh, I failed today making a brownie, which we'll talk about. Dave failed twice making a waffle. <laughs> Two things that Lisa Donovan, when was the last time you failed at a pastry? Oh, all the time. But like, that kind of failure? Oh, maybe never. <laughs> 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 That's just too much. Lisa is in the house today because we were doing an event right here in our Major Domo studio. But before we do that, we were taking full advantage of a pastry legend, a chef legend, to walk us through pie making. You're just synonymous with pie for people who know what's up. It seems up. to be. I think any good Southern pastry chef is got, should have a good pie repertoire. Yeah, but even among the good Southern pastry chefs, and there are many. There are. Uh, you you stand out as a Thanks. as a pie expert, and we had we we hit you up when we were doing our our whole pie yeah. thing yeah. before we got to yeah. I got to taste some mail order pie. I hope, yeah, I didn't make it, so I hope it went well. But uh, yeah, I, I go around and I teach a lot of pie. <laughs> teach a lot of pie. All right, so All crust right. first? Crust first, and then we gotta get it chilled. So we always wanna make your crust first, get it in the fridge. All right, so we're gonna get 750 grams. We're gonna do half of my biggest batch. While I'm measuring this, do you wanna chop the butter? We need a pound and yes. a half of butter, and we need it chopped, chopped rough. And then we're gonna do like a tablespoon. Heavy salt. I kind of like my pie dough to be a little saltier, typically with a sweet, unless I'm doing a savory thing. I'm gonna steal your skill for a second, yeah. just so I can be exact. <laughs> do you like a do you like a rougher? A rougher chop. Yeah, oh, look like, at this. Like a weird, because you kind of want some big guys and you want some little guys. I don't want them to be like too small. Mm -hmm. What I really want is for there to be some bigger pieces and some smaller pieces. And the real beauty is like getting these weird little shrapnel bits okay. that just you don't have to mess with at all. Because I'm just going to go after these guys and let these guys work themselves out. So, continue. You've <laughs> anthropomorphized all this butter into <laughs> little people. Now I feel bad chopping them. <laughs> I'm looking at this butter and I've, we've got like a total melange of different butters. We've got a Whole Foods and a Land O'Lakes and this wholesome farms European style, which I guess is like more Just a little more fat. fat. Yeah. Do you, do you, how much do you care? I uh, don't. Yeah. I mean, we, I, I'm a big fan of using what you have. Um, and I, I like to teach in a way that people can just go to the Kroger and get what they want. Um, go to the Kroger to the, the grab bag of butter section where you're just, you know, the better, the butter, the better, the pie, but you grab. can also make a good pie with whatever butter you need to buy at the grocery store. Let's make some pie. Let's make some pie. Yes. Okay, we've already got our salt in here. Let's get our butter in here. Making sure I me measured everything properly. I think I did. <laughs> You'll notice that it's almost exactly <laughs> the same volume of butter as it is flour. <laughs> That's not a mistake. <laughs> it is basically exactly <laughs> as much flour as it is butter. One of the things I was trying to accomplish was like really solid French technique with southern proportions and percentages. <laughs> this is a southern percentage this proportion for a, sure. It definitely is. Okay, so we start in there, we get everything covered, and then we move to the bench. So frisage method is basically just, okay, a couple of things. Use, using this part of your hand only, right? We're not trying to get our hot uh -huh man hands in here we want to just really using this part because this has the least heat i have really hot hands Same. like really Same. hot hands so i have to be really really careful um, that's trick number one. Second one is you're going to want to constantly be moving your flour right you're want to you're not going to want to beat down this butter over here you're just always moving it so we'll get started frisage is basically a quick puff method you know, your butter's going to get stuck to the table. You just want to pick it up. This is what we're looking for, right? These mm. beautiful flour-covered butter schmears. If this is it, that's good enough, believe it or not. Really? Because it's got flour worked into it. It looks like dough, but it's mm -hmm. 
dough that is basically just a, a smushed piece of butter with some yeah well and see that's kind of the trick so you have to like take measures to make sure because you can make dough if you get in here and like really yeah. cram this butter into this flour you'll never even have to add water it would just turn into dough right. that's the delicacy right the delicacy is giving the butter enough space to just take what it wants of the flour, then you get it. You're, you're always trying to stay out of the way, honestly. You're trying Got to it. just give it enough movement, stay out of the way. And you don't really ever want to do too much smearing without making sure that the piece of butter's got the cover of flour. Mm -hmm. Cause, Cause then you're just putting your hot mm -hmm. hand on some exactly. butter. Exactly. <laughs> so now we've still got a couple of pieces, right? Like that haven't been worked, but we're gonna move to the bowl and then I'm just gonna start really targeting them to keep my hands out of the flour. So, cause I'm at a point now where if I keep doing the frisage method, it will get too hot. So now I'm just gonna go in here, find some bits like that guy, and then just cover it with flour and drop it. Cover it with flour, drop it. And then I can just use my finger, like my fingertips see that it's still like got sizable looking butter right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. like so this is the thing that i feel like it's such like a leap of faith type of thing because i look at this and i think if i've never made pie dough mm -hmm. in my life and i've only seen a pie i think there's no way <laughs> there's like no way this is yeah. worked enough with the the butter like yeah that. but so it has right like these are all I'm, i mean i'm probably going to just tag team them a little bit more but they're looking good like this is perfect <laughs> okay, you can always add more water, but you can't take water out, so you're going to want to start slower than you think, especially at first. That was probably about a quarter cup. Now, technique with adding your water. Like we talked about before, you don't want to do anything. I'm just, I'm just like moving it mm. around. If I were to go in here right now, to start smushing it up. I mean, like I could make what looks like, you know, if I did this, it looks like pie dough, yeah. right? Yeah. And it would feel like pie dough and it would act like pie dough until it got to the oven. Right. Right. So you just want to stay out of the way and you want to not add more water until, okay, so stick your hands down to the bottom. You still feel how you can feel cold water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That has to go away. Okay. So you don't want to add more water until you don't feel that cold wet anymore because you're just letting the flour take what it needs. And it's pretty much gone now, so we'll add a little bit more. Probably about two more tablespoons. And, you know, in my opinion, like a pie dough really shouldn't have <laughs> like a measurement for water, mm -hmm. um, which is hard to convince magazines and newspapers mm -hmm, of. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, you really do need to let this be about what the flour takes. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second though because this is really important because we're gonna not put any more water in. And so what, what has happened is you'll see the water and the flour and the butter have pulled themselves together. I literally didn't do anything. I just did a lot of this, right? I was just moving it around and letting everything touch each other. When it starts to form its own dough, that's when you know you're done. Now, at this point, this is when you go in and you work everything together. So you just give it a couple of little moves to pull everything together. And then what you'll have is a really beautiful, like marbleized pie dough. God, this is like so cool to me. This is like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like getting to see your favorite band play for the first time. You're like, I've always wanted, to, I've always wanted to see the song played live. And I'm just like, I feel so, I don't know if other people are excited. I'm super excited. Just like getting to watch Lisa Donovan make a pie. I'm just like, wow. I was there. I saw it happen. <laughs> Which was life. your favorite boule? <laughs> oh, mine's July 19th, 23. <laughs> the pea. <laughs> 
what just happened in that last second is the whole thing that's like the a, whole thing. Is a, is it a mystery. should be so feel it like it should feel okay. tacky but not sticky it's everyone's like it's so much wetter than other pie doughs usually right like it's not crummy when we roll it out you're gonna see like it's so self-contained and sturdy mm -hmm. and can hold itself you're not having to like patchwork it together it's a good pie dough God. one of my favorite things so I'm gonna weigh this out whole and I'm gonna just divide that by three. What's 1488 divided by three? Somebody quick. 4.96. 4.96. We'll do that. I also could have just eyed it, but this is where I get, what did you say? 4.96. 4.96. Okay, I'm gonna get just a pinch of flour if you'll just give me like a little perfect. I just like to add a little bit of flour whenever I'm making it into the round for the fridge so that it feels a little more civilized. And I'm not, if it's not picking this up on the camera, I'm actually not kneading it. If, if it looks like that, I'm actually just shaping it. Okay, boop. And maybe we should, in the interest of time. Freezy? Maybe just give it a little freezer time and then we'll put it in the fridge. Okay. Um, but something that's really important about pie dough is it's the cold is important, but the resting is really important. Ah. Um, a lot of times it's really important to just, you know, it's the same kind of monster as like when you make a pizza dough, right? Like people, people are probably most familiar with the phenomenon of rolling out a pizza dough and it just shrinks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gluten really needs time to figure out what you just did to it. It needs time to settle in. Just like chill it needs out. to chill out. It needs to feel the butter and, and understand that it's going to take a different shape. So. Interesting. I mean, I'm joking, but also I didn't really think about. I always thought about that in terms of something that's like very glutinous, like a pie, a pizza crust. Yeah. Where you want it to like the dough to quote unquote like relax. Yeah, you do always want but with that pie to is be interesting. true. I hadn't mm -hmm. thought about that. Well, and a lot of people will get pie that especially if you're blind baking which i don't do a whole lot of because mm -hmm. you don't have to with this pie dough it's really built for uh who can blind bake it but i i hate blind baking because i used to make like 25 pies at a time so like who wants to bake 25 twice <laughs> pie doughs you know <laughs> twice um but it does you know you get those shrinking walls of a pie okay dough that's a lot of that like okay um, it maybe just didn't have time to rest, which is also why I roll out my pie dough after it's rested and chilled, put it in the tin, and then put it in the freezer. Got it. Gives it further time to settle in, rest, chill, Got it. establish it's not gonna, shape. It's not going to keep changing as it bakes, basically. Like right. You want it to That's have gone through all of its changes and yep. processes exactly. before it goes out there. Exactly. You gotcha. want, when, it, when you roll it out, you want that to be the shape that it knows it's taking. And we're back. Uh, so you're gonna roll out pie dough, mm -hmm. and then you want to let it rest again. Yes. In its in its home. You want to let it rest again in its home, and for this particular, I mean, for any pie dough, but my pie dough is built for freezing. Mm -hmm. So we want to let it rest, but we also want to freeze it. All right. So the first trick. And I never thought I needed to show people how, mm -hmm. how, Keep to, on going. how to do it. Uh, all of a sudden feel like I have is to. Is how to sprinkle flour. Is how to sprinkle flour. And this, this is not for show. No, it's not. You really are just trying to barely like, like soft winter snow mm -hmm. that doesn't stick to the ground. And the height means you're going to get distribution. Yes, right? exactly. It's not because I've got. I feel like people always think it's for show. And it's, it's like, not. You, can, you do it from here. You're just yeah, going to get a little. You really do mm -hmm. need to sort of get it up here so that you get this beautiful coating. That's what you're looking for. You don't want clumps and then you do it again on top, which you can see a little bit better how it's supposed to look. 
Um, I, Sicilian actually, slugger? Come Sicilian on, slugger. just try Come it. on, come on, I want to try it. The It actually might be the best pie dough roller I've ever had. All right, let's go, slugger. Oh, it's very strong. <laughs> so aggressive. It's so, so, so aggressive. Okay. This is actually working out for me. I had a smaller one. I got intimidated. Mm -hmm. and I was like, Don't no, no. It's just. I think this is working out for me. I'm. I never thought I'd need such a big rolling pin, but here we are. You got to keep moving your pie dough. People's biggest mistake is they keep their pie dough in one place and they move and move it. And then and it's then just stuck to their thing. And then it's stuck and it's uneven. So if you can, if you can keep it moving, this is also a good way for you to feel the thickness of it. So you should be able to pick it up. And you can see like the great marbleization of our butter, which is what you're, how you know you did a good job. That is so beautiful. Isn't it pretty? That's so nice. It's, oh my God. I know. I want a shirt with that. It makes you feel texture. really pleased with yourself, you know? I'm really pleased with you. <laughs> <laughs> so I flip and I move and just try to, in general, keep it from sticking and keep my pressure points from being too in one spot. Because just by nature, everyone's gonna have a stronger one hand or the other. So if you're moving your pie dough, you're not, you know, you're not over being overzealous in one spot. Mm -hmm. And if you'll notice, some the a lot of the comments that I get on this process is that you can move this pie dough. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a, it's, you see how easy this pie dough is? It's friendly, it's not falling apart. When people apart. say it's movable, it's not just gonna crumble into pieces crumbling. when you move it. Yeah. yeah, and that's a good sign that you've got a sturdy pie dough that's gonna like hold up. Which is so wild, because like if reviewing the whole process, at no point did you make this dough strong by just like cramming it oh, into a thing and opposite. working it, right? The it's really interesting. There's a metaphor for life in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Treat your, treat your <laughs> career like your pie dough. <laughs> Don't overwork it. There we go. Okay, so just a little warm. It, you know, ordinarily I would have let this sit for about another hour mm -hmm. in the fridge, but we're gonna, you know, we have martinis and oysters to go to. <laughs> and the same idea of like, you wanna encourage the pie dough to rest into a space. Mm -hmm. In no way, shape, or form am I shoving this pie dough right. in. I'm letting it fall into place, almost like you're like tucking in a shirt. I mm -hmm. mean, that is a little bit of shoving, but we're not doing it that way. I'm just kind of no, showing it where it needs to go. And then I'll do a little bit more forcefulness after it settles. Mm -hmm. You don't want to like assume it's settled in because what it'll just do is fall. So you just need to let it kind of settle in by letting it fall. And now that I've done that, I'm gonna go in and kind of press it around the corners, just a little bit. You can do this with scissors where you just wanna even it up, get rid of some of the fat. Mm. And then you go in and you do a little tuck. And we're gonna do a crumb top on this. If I was doing a lattice top, I would just do this tuck and stop and freeze it. But we're gonna do a crimp top, so I'll go ahead and do the crimp. Hmm. You guys will see the crimp. And you'll notice I didn't throw these away, and you'll see why in a second. They're good to just have when you meet a little spot that maybe the Sicilian slugger <laughs> was too intense to <laughs> to touch and he got scared and ran away. <laughs> uh, I don't actually think I have one. I thought I had one, but I might. You don't listen to her. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> but there's like a little short thing here that I'm just gonna put a little extra, little patch. a little extra patch on because it just got a little short there. Okay, have you ever crimped a pie? Did you already just do that? No. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So you're just gonna go boop. Oh. And, when, and when you go down, when you go in, you're gonna go like a little plie, like a little bump. Plie is a ballet term, sorry. <laughs> I'm mixing my, my loves. Okay, boop, boop. 
boop, boop, boop. It's as easy as it looks. And I'll let you do the other half. Perfect. Okay, and it can go in the freezer. Ta Away we go. All right. That is all she wrote for right now. Yep. The everything's chilling. And you, as chilling. you pointed out, this is a crucial part of the process. It is, yeah. And, hanging and out. resting, hanging out and chilling. So it's gonna hang out for a minute. Just before our, our friends arrive, I feel like Ina Garten. <laughs> Just like, before Jeffrey gets home from the office, we are going to put the pies in so when Jeffrey walks in. <laughs> Everything will smell beautiful in our home. 